This era of digital transformation can be credited to a small group of enterprising entrepreneurs, with Steve Jobs perhaps at the top of the list. Steve Jobs co-founded Apple in his parents' garage in 1976, was fired in 1985, returned to save the firm from near bankruptcy in 1997, and had transformed it into the world's most valuable company. He influenced seven industries along the way, personal computing, animated films, music, phones, tablet computing, retail outlets, and digital publishing. He belongs in the pantheon of America's great innovators alongside Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, and Walt Disney. These men had colorful personalities that will be forgotten in the future, since history will only remember how they used imagination to advance technology and business. The essence of Jobs was that his personality was integral to his way of doing business. He acted without regard to the rules, and his passion and intensity poured into the products he made. His impatience was in tandem with his perfectionism. In the end, it was the results that mattered to him. An array of excellent products were made. iMac, iPod, iPod Nano, iTunes Store, Apple Stores, MacBook, iPhone, iPad, App Store, OS X Lion, and many more. This article looks into the real lessons from Steve Jobs, drawn from looking at what he was like and what principles he held dearly. In an inquiry to Steve Jobs about his greatest creation, instead of what you might think his answer would be, the Macintosh or the iPhone. Instead, he said it was Apple the company and making it an enduring company. He said it was both far more challenging and more important than making a great product. We list five winning principles of his personality and leadership that propelled him to success. 1. Vision and focus. A great leader could identify his goal and rouse his followers to it. Steve Jobs had a solid vision for Apple, but it was his unwavering commitment to pursuing it that set him apart from the rest. When he returned to Apple in 1997, the company was producing a wide range of computers and peripherals, including a dozen different Macintosh models. He had had enough of product evaluation sessions after a few weeks. Stop! he exclaimed. This is insane, he said as he took a magic marker and padded barefoot to a whiteboard, where he sketched a 2x2 two two grid. Here's what we need, he remarked. He named the two rows Desktop and Portable, and scribbled Consumer and Pro above the two columns. He then told his team to concentrate on one outstanding product for each quadrant. Everything else is off the table. He underlined that imagining also entails making judgments about what to pursue and what not to pursue. That was the key to Apple's survival. Jobs' personality was shaped by his ability to concentrate. His Zen training had cultivated this for a long time. He was obsessive about filtering out what he regarded to be distractions. Colleagues and family members would become irritated when they tried to persuade him to deal with problems. Despite this, he insisted on keeping his laser-like focus until he was ready. 2. Simplicity and Innovation His usage of Zen mindfulness meditation helped him to maintain this focus. It aided Jobs in gaining more clarity and achieving higher levels of creativity. The instinct to simplify things by focusing on the essentials and removing the unneeded was accompanied by this emphasis. Apple's initial marketing brochure stated, Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Jobs, on the other hand, did not simply ignore the excesses and complexities of life. It's the simplicity that comes with overcoming it that he's after. Achieving this depth of simplicity requires hard work because, as he said, to make something simple is to truly understand the underlying challenges and come up with elegant solutions. He understood that simplicity is more than just a way of life or a way to get rid of clutter. It was vital to fully comprehend the job of each element in order to eliminate screws, buttons, and unnecessary navigational screens. Excluding screws meant developing a product that was so intricate and sophisticated. To be truly simple, you have to go really deep. A more profound sense of comprehension was required to understand how it is made and designed to achieve a profound sense of simplicity, 
Jobs sought to discover methods to reduce the clutter at every meeting during the design of the iPod interface. He insisted on getting to whatever he wanted in three clicks. Jobs once made the most straightforward proposal of all. Get rid of the on-off button. At first, the team was speechless, but they understood it was unneeded. The most straightforward approach to achieve simplicity was to ensure that all of the hardware, software, and auxiliary devices were integrated flawlessly. This sparked the creation of an Apple ecosystem, in which iPods are connected to a Mac through the use of iTunes software. It made devices easier to use, syncing faster, and malfunctions less likely. Jobs and Apple were in charge of the user experience from beginning to end. It was also fueled by his desire to achieve perfection and create elegant products. He took delight in being different, in challenging the established quo. One of the fundamental aspects that made him such a world-renowned leader and inventor was likely his aversion to societal norms and desire to venture outside the box. Not only does a company that is innovative come up with new ideas first, but it also revolutionizes the industry and Jobs truly led the company to achieve great things. 3. Customer Empathy and Intuition He also took a different approach in terms of understanding customer needs. He not merely tried to understand existing wants and needs, but also strived to foresee future needs using intuition. Jobs did not want to rely solely on extensive market research to know what customers wanted. He believed that customers didn't know what they wanted until it was presented. He summoned Henry Ford's statement, If I had asked customers what they wanted, they would have told me, a faster horse. Jobs dived deeply into what customers want by not simply asking them, but utilizing instincts and intuition to understand desires that have yet to be formed. Instead of relying on traditional market research, he honed his version of empathy an intimate intuition about the wishes of his customers. At times, this meant that Jobs used a one-person focus group, himself. Back in 2000, when numerous portable music players were all their age, Jobs created his own simple device to house thousands of songs in his pocket. His love for music spurred him to design the iPod for himself and his friends. Creating a product for oneself and your family and friends means zero compromises. He never spoke of increasing profits or trade-offs when he and his small team designed the first Macintosh. His command was to make it insanely great. He instructed the team to not worry about the price, but focus on the product specification that delivers performance. This led to an exceedingly costly machine that led to Jobs' ouster from Apple. The Macintosh, on the other hand, sped up the home computer revolution that now controls the world. He employed a unique sense of customer centricity, focusing on delivering compelling products and believing profits would follow. After Jobs left, John Scully, who managed Apple from 1983 to 1993, was a marketing and sales executive who was more concerned with profit maximization than product design. This was when Apple began to deteriorate. When Jobs returned, he refocused Apple's efforts on creating new products, starting with the sprightly iMac, the PowerBook, and then the iPod, iPhone, and iPad. His ambition, he explained, My passion has been to build an enduring company where people were motivated to make great products. Everything else was secondary. Sure, it was great to make a profit because that allowed you to make great products, but the products, not the profits, were the motivation. 4. Passion and Perfection Steve Jobs was known to be a ruthless leader. He is often pointed out as a picture of tough leadership that demanded incredibly high expectations from his colleagues. He once said, Be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. Jobs was ruthless and set the bar high for his people. This was fueled by his perfectionist personality, which drove everything at Apple, including flawless production and development. It was almost procedural for Jobs to call for a pause during any product development process to go back to the drawing board when he felt it wasn't perfect. Days before the launching of the first Apple Store, 
he suddenly decided to delay it a few months to redo the store's layout to reorganize it around activities and not just product categories. This has become a global best practice in retail merchandising. Jobs often delayed product launches because he felt like he didn't love it. But the delays brought about critical changes that led to iconic innovations. It was significantly personal for Jobs, both the big picture and the details. Some CEOs excel with vision, while others thrive on the nitty-gritty. Both can be seen in Jobs. His zeal was put to use on both large and minute things. For example, in 2000, he proposed that the personal computer be transformed into a digital hub for managing all users' media and content, and eventually the hub would be moved to the cloud. While he was envisioning Apple's monumental pursuits, he also worried about the form and color of the screws inside the iMac. His perfectionism was fueled by his passion for his work and the company. Jobs mightily believed in the vision and mission of Apple. He was intensely committed to ensuring its future and success. 5. Human and Science Innovation today is a superb orchestration of connecting unlikely ideas, including varying ideologies. Steve Jobs is rooted in two great social movements in the San Francisco Bay Area, the counterculture of hippies and anti-war activists, and the high-tech and hacker culture of Silicon Valley. Both were founded in aching for personal enlightenment and the development of a new world. He embodied the ambition to develop and pursue new ideas, which he personified. Convergence was the fruit of his imagination. He combined the humanities with the sciences, creativity with technology, and the arts with science. With the iPhone, for example, Jobs combined his love of calligraphy and design with his love of technology. As Steve launched the first tech business that was rigorously committed to great design and aesthetics, this became Apple's distinctive selling proposition. Jobs finished virtually any product announcement with a slide that featured a sign at the crossroads of liberal arts and technology at almost every product introduction over the last decade. Creativity between humanities and the sciences will be vital in building innovative economies in the 21st century. It is the essence of applied imagination. Jobs showed us how it can catapult us into a future where fantasies can be made a reality. Jobs was a visionary, and he made sure that everyone in the company bought into that vision. It created a higher purpose for the company to be excited and excel for. He was famously impatient, irritable, and harsh with the people around him. But his treatment of people emanated from his passion for perfection and his desire to work with only the best. There was no room for tolerance for complacency and mediocrity. His rudeness accompanied an aptitude to be inspirational. He inspired Apple employees with his passion for creating groundbreaking products and believed that they could accomplish what seemed impossible. He remained active with his team in the innovation process by suggesting ideas, providing feedback, and leading by example. This motivated and empowered his team to keep coming up with brilliant ideas with impact. His passion and innovation were contagious. Jobs had a strong desire to disrupt more industries, and this philosophy ingrained a culture of innovation into the company. His key principles for success helped him build a company that will not only endure, but thrive in the future. Apple continues to create disruptive products that stand at the intersection of creativity and technology. Steve Jobs not only changed the landscape of technology and innovation, he changed the world. How can you adopt these principles to solidify the success and future of your company?